this is Jesus's prayer that he prayed before uh, he was taken away the night that he was betrayed. This is what he prayed to the Father, um, and this is um, what he asked the Father for. I'm reading from John 17, um, starting in verse 6, and I'll read to probably 24. I have revealed to you those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them your words that you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those that you've given to me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. All glory has come to me through them, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name that you gave me. None of them have been lost, except for the one that was doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may truly be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that, they, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those who you have given to me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Welcome to Monday Minute. The other day I was praying, as I often do for those that I love, and I was praying for their protection and their safety. Then a thought came to me. Wouldn't it be a better idea to pray that they'd be steadfast in their faith? that they would know what their inheritance is, that they would know what authority that they have and the power that they have in Jesus. Rather than praying that we never experience spiritual attacks or hard times, wouldn't it be better for God's children to know how to resist the enemy so that he had to flee? Wouldn't it be better to know that we can face fierce opposition, but we're promised victory? Protection is wonderful, but I don't think it's all that we should ask for. Stay safe was never one of Jesus's commands. I have a hunch that if all we received when we believed in Jesus Christ was protection, we would end up being self-centered, weak and ineffective human beings. Protection from hardships would likely create complacency. We would get comfortable here. We wouldn't long for heaven. We might forget to reach out to our neighbors and tell them that the good news that Jesus made a way to heaven. If our prayer is for protection and to be safe, then when life hits us hard and we find ourselves in unpleasant circumstances, our first response might be to conclude that God doesn't love us because he didn't protect us. We might wonder if God is as powerful as he says he is because he didn't stop the hardship or the pain. Our faith gets shattered. We lose hope. Our spirits get troubled. What if instead our prayer was to sanctify us, to make us holy? Let us be grounded in the truth. Help us not to lose focus of Jesus. Help us to love with our whole heart. Empower us to forgive. Give us eyes to know who the real enemy is. Fill us with your courage, increase our faith. Help us to keep from evil. Show us how to be humble and how to value others. Give us the strength to stand firm in you. Remind us to put on the full armor of God. 
bring to mind who we are in Christ and what that means for our present situation as well as our future. I often find myself praying for safety and protection from, from attacks, and that's not a bad thing, but it's not enough. In my own existence, it's in the hard times of utter dependency on Christ that my faith is made stronger. Jesus actually promised us trouble, persecution, and hardship. But he also promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. He told us that the Holy Spirit came to dwell in us when we believe. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our counselor, our advocate, our comforter, and he intercedes for us. He's the spirit of truth and he teaches us. He reminds us what Jesus taught. He gives us spiritual gifts and he empowers us to do what God called us to do. When we don't know what to pray for, he does, and he intercedes for us according to the will of God. When Jesus was praying for his disciples and for all of those who would believe in him because of their word, he asked the Father to keep them or to keep us in his name. We need God's power to give us grace as well as to keep us in his grace. We can be assured that the gifts and the blessings and the ministries that he has given to us are safe in his care. Jesus prayed and asked the Father to protect us from the evil one. This would likely include the idea of keeping their lives and ministries from being overcome by Satan or any other kind of evil or from doing evil. Maybe it means don't let Satan destroy them. If you allow sifting, help their faith not to fail. Keep them from Satan, driving them to despair. Guard them from giving in to sin and evil things and anything that looks like sin. Help them to avoid evil and to be disgusted by it. The way we keep from evil is to be sanctified or made holy in the truth. Let the truth wash over us. We submerge ourselves in it until we're purified by it. All scripture is truth. Sanctification is a process and it's perfected when we enter heaven. It begins here on earth immediately as we put our faith in Jesus and it continues as we abide in the truth. I pray that we have eyes to see through evil for what it really is. I pray we would, we would discern to stay away from it and not be enticed by it at all. As we grow in truth, evil loses its appeal. As we're sanctified, we grow in love and we strive for unity. This love is from the Father. As we trust his heart, it's a joy to do his will. If we trust someone and are secure in their love, when hard times hit, our relationship is secure and safe. To pray that hard times will never come is futile, but if we pray that when hard times do come, we would remain steadfast in our faith, hope, and love, that's a prayer God delights to answer. May we have eyes to see the goodness of God and have discernment to recognize evil for what it actually is. May we ever be looking to the word of truth and be asking the spirit of truth to guide us. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and in him we are secure no matter what comes our way. You can read John 14 to 17, all three of those chapters, and uh, you'll find more treasures in there. As you do, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand and to make sense of it all. Let's remember to pray for each other in this way. May God bless you. Mm -hmm.